Hey guys, how's it going today? I got a good question from a YouTube user by the name of Steam Powered last week asking me how do you optimize your graphics cards? So today I'm going to show you how to optimize the graphics cards for Windows. We're going to go through that specifically on my 3070, but I'll leave some settings in the description down below on what you could use for some of the other cards. Now let's head over to the computer. All right, so here we are on my test bench. This is currently running a 3070. Uh, this is the same bench that we did the nice hash profitability. So I'm going to show you what to do. So first steps first, go ahead and open your web browser and you're going to want to download a program. And this program is going to be called Afterburner. So go ahead and search for Afterburner. It's made by MSI. And I want to go ahead and download Afterburner, save it, and open it up. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install this. So open it up, Just hit yes, okay, next, accept, next, 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 next. All right, so when we get to this part, just go ahead, hit OK, hit next, accept, and next, and just keep hitting next through all this. All right, so once that's done, you can close out of that, and go ahead and close out of everything, and it's going to launch this. If it doesn't, go ahead and click on this MSI Afterburner here. So in this video, I'm specifically going to talk about Ethereum and optimizing your graphics card for Ethereum hashing. So first things first is your graphics card needs to have at least four gigabytes of memory for Ethereum. Right now, I think you might even need like 4.1 or 4.2 gigabytes of memory. Um, so we're going to open up our nice hash here and we're going to start mining. All right, so let's see here. For the sake of this video, we're just going to do the 3070. All right, so it's going to load the DAG file whoop, and start mining. So if you don't optimize your cards, the temperatures are going to increase and you're going to use more electricity and essentially waste your profit. Now that everything is going, let's see what the starting hash is. Okay, so it looks like we're doing 51.78 mega hashes for NVIDIA cards specifically. What you want to do is you're going to want to find a good power limit and you're going to slowly decrease it. So first things first is this little link button. You're going to want to click on that. What that does is it uncouples the temperature from the power. So you can change this slider without changing this one. So usually the first place that I go to is I'll take it all the way down to 80% power usage. On most NVIDIA cards, when you bring it down to 80, it does not affect your hashes at all. I probably still get 51.6, 51.7. But what it does do is if you notice here on the temperature graph is it's bringing down the temperature of your graphics card. It's also going to bring down the power usage of your graphics card. We'll see that here on the next share. So we were using 198 watts. We're now using 175. Temperatures have gone from 68 down to 66. This is going to increase the longevity of your graphics card. So now we want to go ahead and increase the hash rate so we get more money for our card so i a safe area to go on most nvidia graphics cards just for starting is 800 so if you do plus 800 on the graphics hit this checkbox it is now boosting the graphics uh the sorry it is now boosting the memory core on the graphics card the memory clock sorry on the graphics card so I'll put some settings down below because every card usually goes to a different spot. The sweet spot that I've found 
is about 1200 here on 3060 ti's and 3070s but the way that i found it is i wait i see that this is stable so look now we're getting 54 almost 55 hashes here normally i'll let it sit for five minutes make sure everything is stable and then increase for the sake of this video we, we're not going to wait five minutes so we're going to go up to 900 hit the checkbox so now we're up to 900 as you can see our profit over here it was seven something it's now almost eight dollars and our hash rate is now at 57.93 it's almost 58 so now we've peaked eight eight dollars and eight cents this is just on the graphics card mind you so once again you wait see it's stable and you continue you go up to now we have a thousand clock right you go oh look a thousand is stable you let it run for five minutes no problems okay once you cross over a thousand though you're gonna want to dial it back how far you jump maybe i would maybe do 20 to 50 uh megahertz on the memory clock so let's say we do 1050 right because now we're over a thousand that's where things can start getting a little bit dicey um you can see our hash rates are slowly and slowly going up and for me i found that my graphics card does not crash at 1200 so if i keep it at 1200 you should see our hash rate is going to go up we're probably going to hit 60 is my guess and sometimes you get these rejected shares essentially what that means is your graphics card mined a share but when it sent it to the pool the pool didn't like the answer it gave or it was too late right so that just means that you're not going to get paid for that one share now that can happen if you're overclocked too much your graphics uh core or your memory is working too hard and the numbers don't come out right normally rebooting everything just fixes that at least it does for me everything will go back to normal and it will stop you can see the rejected rate here on this t-rex miner that uh we're using it was four percent went up to nine it's going to go to eight usually it levels off after like an hour anyway and my average was about one to two percent which is normal if you start getting like ten percent and higher that's when you're going to want to reboot your miner or maybe dial back the clock on the memory so for ethereum memory is the most important thing you can overclock because the dagger hashimoto algorithm makes a dag file and essentially that is a big chunk of uh that gets put into your memory and you want to get rid of that as fast as possible and make the next one well how do you do that it's it's all memory based right so what you want to do is overclock the memory the memory runs faster that means it's running the computations for this dag file faster now you can see we're getting about 61 and i'm gonna you know maybe want to dial it back some more on the power limit and see if i can get a better right here kill a hash per watt rating and essentially what that means is i'm paying less electricity for the same amount or maybe slightly less mega hash so we start with 80 usually and you work your way down you're going to try maybe i don't know 75. so you click 75 and you wait a couple minutes you see what happens you're going to want to wait and see what happens on the mega hashes here as you can see i adopted down to 75 and i'm still doing 61.9 so we're still in the variance right and your temperature is going to drop the lower you set this power limit because you're using electricity less and less and electricity coming through your graphics card is what's heating it so it's stable here our temperature went down so now what we're going to do is we're going to lower it again now normally you want to lower this by like i don't know two to three until until you see a an effect so for me i know that 70 works because i've tried it before so we're going to go to 70 and it's not going to make any difference on this mega hash so now you see we it made a very slight difference i should say 
60.88 instead of 61. And now it's 60.93. So I would say for the 10-ish watts that we saved going from 164 to 153 was definitely worth that a uh, small hit in hash rate so we're at you know we had 61 and now we're at 60.98 that's almost like not even worth paying extra electricity for you can see our profitability even went up we're at eight dollars fifty cents so uh, here we go we're hitting that almost 61 um so you're gonna want to bring it down some more let's see what happens if we go to 65 we're going to see now the temperature is dropping. We're at 62 degrees now on the graphics card. But let's see what happens to our hash rate. So here we go. We're pulling 61 and 62 degrees. So you can see here our uh, kilohash per watt actually went up. We're now at 421. So that's, that's great, honestly. Uh, for 65, it's going to keep the card very very cool i have noticed on some of the 10 series cards like the 1060s and the 1080s you can actually get a small boost in performance by overclocking the core clock like i said earlier i'm going to leave the settings down in the description for different cards and what seems to work for those cards keep in mind though uh guys these settings that i'm giving you are for my cards and if you're not aware of the thing called the silicon lottery i'll go down we'll break it down really quickly every graphics card is made with silicon wafers now when they make these wafers they're massive absolutely massive and they punch out essentially your chip now some of these chips are going to be better than others just because of where they come from on that wafer maybe like half of the wafer was bad or a slight portion of the wafer was bad and your chip might have like a tenth on that bad spot so you might not hash as good as me or you might get the holy grail and these settings might take you up to 65 mega hashes i've seen it happen before i have one card in my uh 3060 ti evga rig and that thing runs so cool and hashes so high compared to all the other cards that i have and it's basically like a, a miracle card, right? And then sometimes you get graphics cards and they absolutely suck at what you're trying to do mining because for some reason you just got that bad, bad silicon lottery roll. So keep that in mind, but I will put that in the description. Uh, on the 30 series, I usually do about negative 200 on the core clock because it doesn't seem to make a difference on your hashes. But what it does do is it frees up more electricity for the memory and removes it from the graphics clock. And that is going to A, increase stability on your memory, and B, it's going to hopefully decrease the temperature because the, the core is running less. So now that we kind of have a breakdown on how to optimize the graphics cards, I want to let you guys know that there's going to be times where you push too hard. So let's say I went in here and I did 1500. I'm not going to do it because my computer is going to blue screen if I do. But that being said, let's say you try 1200 or 1250 on your card for memory clock and it's stable for five, 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden it crashes. You might need to dial it back. And don't be worried about the crashes. The crashes usually won't affect anything. It's normally like your screen will go black or things like that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people panic. Don't worry. All you have to do is turn off your computer and turn it back on. And if you have any problems with it turning back on, don't just turn off your computer. Unplug it from the power after it's turned off. Press the power button about 10 times and then plug everything back in and turn it on. That's going to drain all the electricity out of your system and it's going to start up uh, from scratch essentially without any problems more than likely. Uh, but, you know, try everything at your own risk. We're overclocking. So 
this is always outside of the uh, board maker specs, but these are fairly safe from what I've done with uh, mining here. All my graphics cards are overclocked, undervolted to get the best bang for buck. So I hope that helped you guys. If you have any questions, please, please put it down in the description. Uh, if it's a question that I can't answer in a couple sentences, I'll probably make a video for you. If you want me to make a video on a different topic, put it down below. Um, that's how I made this video. It was because of a comment that I got on the last video. So like that, if you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. I'm just here to help educate you guys. And hopefully I've done my job. We'll see you guys in the next one.